It's the second Sunday of Lent and the last Sunday of February. And uh, we start our service with uh, the tune to the hymn Praise to the Holiest in the Height. St. Luke's, we're following the Bible's account of David when King Saul was after him to kill him. And last week we recognised that suffering is a Christian thing. God's anointed David suffered. And Jesus, the son of David, God's only begotten son, suffered for no good reason. But it is part of how God reaches out to this rebellious world, holding out to manipulative, self-important people far and wide, his king for all. Today's reading, the next bit of the narrative, reminds us that being associated with God's chosen king can bring us suffering too. We've reached 1 Samuel 22, verse 6 and following, and Saul is getting angrier. Now Saul heard that David and his men had been discovered, and Saul, spear in hand, was seated under the tamarisk tree on the hill at Gibeah, with all his officials standing round him. Saul said to them, Listen, men of Benjamin, will the son of Jesse give all you fields and vineyards? Will he make all of you commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds? Is that why you have all conspired against me? No one tells me when my son makes a covenant with the son of Jesse. None of you is concerned about me or tells me that my son has incited my servant to lie in wait for me as he does today. So we see Saul getting angrier and uh, paranoid. And then one of Saul's henchmen broke the silence, Doeg the Edomite. He told of a recent sighting of David, verse 9 and following. But Doeg the Edomite, who was standing with Saul's officials, said, I saw the son of Jesse come to Ahimelech, son of Ahitub at, at Nob. Ahimelech inquired of the Lord for him. He also gave him provisions and the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. Then the king sent for the priest Ahimelech, son of Ahitub, and his father's whole family, who were the priests at Nob, and they all came to the king. Saul said, Listen now, son of Ahitub. Yes, my lord, he answered. Saul so said to him, Why have you conspired against me, you and the son of Jesse, giving him bread and a sword and inquiring of God for him, so that he has rebelled against me and lies in wait for me as he does today? Now, Ahimelech is on the spot, isn't he? What will he do? What would you do? What, what can be said? Well, Ahimelech knows he's in peril. Uh, but he also knows he must follow his conscience and show his integrity, which is what he does. Ahimelech answered the king, Who of all your servants is as loyal as David, the king's son-in-law, captain of your bodyguard and highly respected in your household? 
Was that day the first time I inquired of God for him? Of course not. Let not the king accuse your servant or any of his father's family, for your servant knows nothing at all about this whole affair. But the king said, You shall surely die, Ahimelech, you and your father's whole family. So Ahimelech was truthful. He was loyal to David and, and he was loyal to Saul, as he didn't realise that there was this issue between them. Now, where does honesty and truth get you? Well, with good people, it gets you a long way. The good officials of King Saul refused to harm him in the next verse, 17. Then the king ordered his guards, turn and kill the priests of the Lord, because they too have sided with David. They knew he was fleeing, yet they did not tell me. But the king's officials were not willing to raise a hand to strike the priests of the Lord. Where, where does truth and honesty get you? Well, with good people, it gets you a long way. But with bad people, it often means you suffer. Verse 18. The king then ordered Doeg, you turn and strike down the priests. So Doeg the Edomite turned and struck them down. That day he killed 85 men who wore the linen ephod. He also put to the sword Nob, the town of the priests, with its men and women, its children and infants, and its cattle, donkeys and sheep. So not only was Ahimelech killed, nearly all his family were killed, his fellow priests were killed, and the people of his town were killed, and all the animals were killed. I guess bad people like to make a big example of those who refuse to express complete loyalty and who refuse to join in uh, lying, deceitful schemes. In the extreme, like Islamic State killing so many innocents in Syria, it's to scare people to fall in line. But it goes on in all sorts of places in this world. But Ahimelech was not going to lie. Ahimelech was loyal to David and he was loyal to Saul because he knew David was loyal to Saul and that was true. But Saul was not interested in the truth. He was in power and he was paranoid. And at his hands, so many good people would suffer. Suffering is part of being associated with God's king. It was true then, when Ahimelech refused to join in the lies about David. And it's true today, when in so many parts of the world, if we are true to Jesus, bad people will treat us badly, just for our association with God's King and our unwillingness to lie. So what should we do? Well, there are several practical helps which emerge from this passage and elsewhere in the Bible. And the first thing we should do is to embrace the suffering which comes from being associated with God's King, Jesus. Jesus suffered and told his followers they should expect to as well. As James writes, Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that testing develops endurance. Embrace much suffering. Two, don't be tempted to repay evil with evil. When bad people do bad things, we want to retaliate. But Jesus... He repaid good for evil. That might mean we suffer some more, but it is the way of Jesus Christ and a clear conscience. Leave the vengeance to God on the last day. For our part, repay evil with good.
don't be tempted to repay evil with evil. And thirdly, pray. And here we have the benefit of knowing what David was praying at this very time. It's there in Psalm 52. The psalm which has the title, When Doeg had gone to Saul and told him about David and Ahimelech. And we see in that psalm, in the first four verses, he prayed with feelings his disgust at Doeg's evil words and actions. And then in verses 5 to 7, he acknowledged it is God who will bring down the wicked and the righteous will be vindicated at the last. This is what helped him not to retaliate, not to get bitter. And then the psalm finishes with his thanks, thankful for God's truth and goodness, which he will share with fellows who seek to be true. When we're faced with evil and lies, we can pray honestly, with feeling, helpfully, like David. And a fourth thing we must do is to stay humble, avoid getting paranoid. Often when we suffer, we're in danger of getting things out of proportion. One person picks on us a lot, and we might think the whole room is against us, but they're not. For David and Abiathar, the only survivor of the atrocious, murderous rampage that day, it was good to remember that the king's officials had refused to harm them. Only Doeg and Saul were the evildoers. We see that in, towards the end of the chapter, verse 20. But Abiathar, son of Ahimelech, son of Ahitub, escaped and fled to join David. He told David that Saul had killed the priests of the Lord. And David said to Abiathar, that day when Doeg the Edomite was there, I knew he would be sure to tell Saul, I am responsible for the death of your father's whole family. There is David, staying humble. When we suffer, we try to stay sane and humble. And finally, we do well to find the company of those who are with us, fellows who are seeking to be true and seeking to be God's people, honestly. So David said to Abiathar, join our company, verse 23. Stay with me, don't be afraid. The man who is seeking your life is seeking mine also. You will be safe with me. So he joined God's people many of them fellow sufferers, and was glad of the company of those seeking truth and serving the servant king. More next week. But now let's have our second hymn tune. And uh, what's this one, uh, Wendy? Be thou my guardian and my guide. Be thou my guardian and my guide. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.